broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Returning to the show tonight as our sole featured guest is Nick Patterson. Last time he appeared on Wilms Front, I introduced him as an MMA fighter as he was in the news for continuing to operate his MMA training gym in Cranbourne back in April during the first stage three lockdown, which is fair to say didn't work in containing the coronavirus. He was arrested during the Mother's Day anti-lockdown protest ever since the second lockdown began on July 9th. Mainstream media have been targeting and doxing so-called virus deniers and anti-maskers. Nick is a member of Empowerment Solutions, which is a uh, educational organization uh, which teaches people how to reclaim their inherent rights. Nick has also started his own blog at john8.net, named after the Bible passage John 8, 32, the truth shall set you free. As a small business owner, father, and Christian, uh, the lockdowns have affected his livelihood and way of life uh, the greatest uh, amongst most people. Nick, thanks for coming back on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, mate. I really appreciate it. Uh, now, obviously, you've been aware of the, the mainstream media write-ups about you over the past uh, two weeks. I think I alerted you to, to, to a couple of them. Uh, they, they, they seem to know a lot about you, these uh, journalists at the, the Herald Sun or the Australian or the Daily Mail. Have they contacted you for comment? No, they haven't contacted me. Uh, one, I did receive, no, I was contacted once by seven, seven, a report from Seven News. Was that the yeah. reporter who interviewed you the first time, Paul Dowsley? No, no, it wasn't. It was another one. And they asked if I wanted to um, you know, talk to them, and I said, no, I just, oh, I, didn't, I wasn't interested. Yeah, you're, you're done with uh, the mainstream media. And now you've been described as a, a member of a cult or a cult leader, uh, a conspiracy theorist, a sovereign citizen, uh, and uh, people such as yourself engage in selfish and childish stunts uh, uh, with uh, police officers at uh, checkpoints, uh, uh, reading through a, 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 a script uh, about how to get past uh, checkpoints. How would you describe yourself? Well, I don't know where they came up with sovereign citizen. I mean, that's an oxymoron. You can't be a sovereign and a citizen at the same time. Um, I don't know what a sovereign citizen really is. So that's just a term that they've came up, come up with. Maybe there's some people that are at our, at our events that are part of a group called sovereign citizens. I, I don't know. Um, as far as being a cult, well, that's just defamation and, and um, they're, they're slandering me. You know, they, don't want, they don't like people going against the narrative and proving the narrative wrong. Uh, they don't want people that are armed with, with truth and that are applying it when it goes against their, um, you know, their, their narrative. So what we've been doing is organizing people together where we, we uh, to my gym, and we, we run it like a, a gym class where I will have people, like I say, it's a boxing class. You would have one person holding pads, another person hitting the pads, or two people sparring. What we do is we, we give a script to half of the people over there that are present, and it has several scenarios on there, and then would have the other the other person would be the um, defendant, and would switch roles and would change scenarios. So it was just a way of people learning how to apply their rights because there's certain inherent rights that we have. You know, you, you're not obliged to speak to police unless you're you know you're you're driving, um, so you don't have to actually speak to police. And and you know we just explain that you know there's high court cases for that. Uh, DPP versus Hamilton. You know, you're under no obligation to um, to speak to police unless you're already under arrest. So, I, I, you know, so we just teach people simple ways to um, to be able to protect their right to travel, right to to do the things that they want to do. Um, and what's obviously they came to my you know, into my space to try and shut my business down. They've also shut down a number of churches where you know that I'm involved with, which is has caused me to be a little bit more active on the on the front and you know and that's how i've I, I guess i've become sort of known in the community is, is somebody that that has stood up but has also then you know given a lot of effort and time to try and help other people 
to know what the actual law is because um, the, the sad the sad state of affairs is that we've got police going around with guns um, enforcing draconian rules that when they don't actually have authority to do a lot of the things that they're doing well they, they do actually, now under the the state of disaster oh, yeah but they but prior to that i mean where where, where did the um you know did the people ever give permission and power to the government to shut down everybody's livelihood or a whole lot of people's livelihoods you know? well like, it's like, it? uh, now we and we're going to get into this later it's under already passed legislation which obviously people should have been paying more attention scrutinizing it more when it was passed the health and well-being act of uh, 2008 that was the initial one that uh, uh, allowed uh, the premier to declare a state of emergency the uh, state of disaster is under the emergency management Act 2013, uh, which uh, replaced the Emergency Management Act of uh, 1986. So they, these laws have been uh, passed, uh, they've been on the books for a number of years. Uh, I haven't dug up the sort of vote tallies, but you can probably assume that it was bipartisan. They're, so they've been sitting there and now they've been utilised to their fullest extent. I guess you've got to wonder why they've, they've created these. They seem to have a bit of a timeline where they, they create this legislation prior to them using and abusing it. You know, they, they seem to just appoint themselves extra powers. You know, they, they, you know, well, there's a constitution, but, you know, they don't really care about the constitution. They only regard it when it's in their favour. When it's not, they will just disregard it. Well, you have to remember our Australian constitution. It basically... Uh, it goes through the separation of powers, which uh, powers the, the state and federal governments have. That's it. We don't have a Bill of Rights like the, the, the United States. Even now, it's called implied freedom of political communication. That's not in the yeah. Constitution. That uh, was invented by the, the High Court when they interpreted responsible and representative government. Yeah, no, and I agree. I agree with you. I, I guess I, I look at it a little bit different um, because I, I look at it like we shouldn't need our rights to be written down to know that we have rights. I think everybody knows deep down that you have a right to sustain yourself in your life. You have a right to breathe freely and enjoy your life. And, and it, it, I don't think it needs to be written down somewhere. I mean... If, oh, I'm just explaining how they're able to do all uh, this. That's... Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. They uh, certainly, uh, obviously, they, they publicised that uh, uh, script uh, for getting through uh, checkpoints, uh, but uh, how they really uh, demonised people such as yourself was through the, well, there were, there were two uh, Bunnings Karens, as they will uh, referred to, uh, they, uh, and they both had uh, blonde hair, uh, so it was easy to get them mixed up both but uh, both middle-aged and there was uh, one of them who filmed herself abusing the uh, the bunnings staff and uh, quote uh, quoting the the 1948 uh, uh, human rights declaration which if she is say a sovereign citizen why is she quoting a globalist document to my uh, my uh, my own point of view is international law is not worth the paper uh, it's it's written on the the sovereignty that I believe is the sovereignty of nations. So uh, these uh, international human rights laws, charters, courts, treaties—they have no legal standing. And so, and of course, she was abusing those uh, staff at Bunnings who uh, just try uh, ju uh, uh, just trying to earn some money uh, while everyone else is uh, businesses is getting shut and their uh, uh, th th their jobs going. Uh, did, you, did you know either of these two uh, Bunnings Karens? Never met them. Never met them before. No one I know knows them either. And I know lots and lots of people that, that, are, um, that, are, that are connected in different groups to people that are sort of on the other side of the, um, you know, the, of the government agenda. The people that are very anti anti what's, what's going on at the moment, you know, with different groups, you know, the 99% group and all these other groups. and. I've asked them, I said, look, do you, do you know who this, who Karen is? Does anyone know this Karen? No one knows. I didn't know there were two Karens, actually, so I didn't know that. There was, I don't watch the yeah, TV. The, <laughs> the one who was on the Today Show was uh, was not the Karen who quoted the, the human rights uh, 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 declaration of 
human rights, the 1948 United Nations one. It was it was the other one. Yeah, and I think the only reason you would you would um, to, you would mention those those treaties and would be because they're the directives are coming from the UN that they're applying. So there's a directive from the UN and then the Chief Health Officer makes another directive based on that, the UN directive. So you'd go, well, hang on, you know, it's coming, this is the source of power. Obviously, this is where it's coming from. Um, and I think that would be the, the reasoning or, or, you know, quoting something like the, um, the International you know, Declaration of Human Rights or the ICCPR, uh, or Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. but. You know, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know who she is. I, you know, a lot of people think she's an actor, or, or I don't know about both of them. They've said Karen's an actor um, in, in different groups. Maybe she, maybe she is. Maybe she's controlled opposition. I, I don't know. I don't know her. Well, the reason they they chose Bunnings was because, well, Bunnings is going to be closed tomorrow, except for I think. Uh, accredited tradies and what is it we've got the what is it uh, permitted worker scheme now which is the uh, what i refer to in my introduction the uh, the papers uh, please so the the karens can't go into bunnings but they had the the strictest um, no mask no entry uh, policy uh, as opposed to other all of the other retailers which i basically refer to as a policy which was going to guarantee uh, confrontation. I saw you do a, a Facebook Live when you were in Woolworths uh, unmasked. You were able to do your shopping, no issues. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the only reason I did that video was because I I went earlier in the day. I went to a different Woolworths and they told me I needed to wear a um, mask, and I I said, oh no thanks. So I just kept walking, and then the manager came out and he was all shaky and nervous and was really quite aggressive. Me and I and I said to him, I said, look, you know, I, what's the reason for, you know, what's the reason for having to wear a mask here? And, and I asked him that question so I could get to the heart of the issue. And he said, it's because it's the new law. So then I had a discussion with him about the new law. And, and I said, well, there's no override declaration. And, and I sort of, I went, went in that direction with, and he said, well, you know what? I, I don't care. We're going to, we're not going to serve you. And I said, well, I, I want you to. I've asked you to provide the evidence that there's a sort of an override to the human rights charter, or an evident evidence that the um, human rights charter is no longer valid. You're talking about the Victorian one, Charter yeah, of yeah. Human Rights and Responsibilities, yeah. which so now just, has just, basically been suspended under this state of disaster. Yeah, and I, so I said, if, if that's the case, then if, if you can provide evidence of it, then I'm happy to go along with you. And and he said, oh, we don't we don't care. We're just we're just not going to serve you. And, and, we, and he said, look, we can. Where, where, you know, we have the right to refuse from... Like they they do. And I agree, I agree. Yeah, you do. But you told me that the reason was because it was the law. And now I've, I've questioned that. So I said, so now, now, and then you, you said, well, no, no, we're not going to answer that. I'm just going to refuse you. So I said, well, that's... Now, now, now it's not really about the law. It's about something else. And it's it, it can... It borders on discrimination. So anyway, I went in, I did my shopping. I went through the self-checkout. They didn't bother me. Then I went to another supermarket. I thought, you know, I'll, let's see if it happens again. So I and I, you know, so I put my recording on and, and I haven't been bothered again. That was the only time I was ever bothered. Um, and I go to the shop all the time you know, to Woolworths. So I haven't been to Coles because, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I got the Afghan shop up the road. I go there a bit now because they don't ask any questions. Afghan yeah. shop. Yeah, it's a big Afghan supermarket up the road. So I go there and, and spend my money. I never used to, but now that, you know, they don't give me any headaches about not wearing a mask. So, um, and they're next door to the coal. So they're getting on my business now. Oh, that's quite interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that Cranbourne had one. I, I assume <laughs> since you're shopping there, they, they, they must have some, some good food. <laughs> it's not bad. Mm. Yeah. Well, certainly, uh, now more than ever, if it's important to uh, support uh, small businesses. Well, I, I think so, because, uh, you know, the, the small businesses are the ones that are getting given the, uh, the hardest, um, you know, they get all these different, basically, they'd be given another job to do. Mm. So a friend of mine's got a, a friend that um, owns a small, a small franchise um, that do cakes and, and um, you know, coffees and all the rest of it. And they've been told that all the casual workers that they have, they have to do, they have to fill out all of these forms, and they're, they're 
the big documents of birth like, Yeah, it's, I've had a look at them. It has like you actually have to write down what shifts you you, you work. It's it's a huge uh, double sided A4 document. Yeah, exactly. So they're going to do this for all of their all their workers for every single shift. Now, are they getting paid to do that extra work? So the government's just said, here, there's a whole lot of extra work. You have to do it. It's coming from the government, but we're not going to pay you to do that extra work. Mm. Now, that, that's not right. That's that's black and white. That's wrong. Um, but, but they're doing it, you know, and, and if they're not, they, it seems to be the big companies that are exempt from it. You know, it doesn't seem to affect them. The well, they've already them got right. existing compliance departments, and so they can easily uh, sort it all out within a day or so. Yeah, um, and this is what they've done. They've, they've just, they're, they're wearing out the people. Um, and a lot of people, I've already know, I've got a friend who's, um, his cousin lost his uh, his restaurant, closed it down. Uh, I've got another friend that said, if my business closes, I'll commit suicide. You know, he, he, he said it to me. Now, I don't know if he really means that, but this is... This is, is he is, he's still, like, alive at the moment? He's still, he's still, his business is still operational. Okay, so, yeah, he's... Is okay, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, it's still operational, but he said that to me on the phone. He said, Nick, you know, I don't know what I'll do if I lose my business. You know, it means a lot to him. So, mm. you know, they're, they're hurting people. You know, who are these? Who are they to hurt people in such a way and yeah. think that they have the, the, the moral high ground to do that? And not one journalist at uh, Dan Andrews press conferences is, is asked about that. Yeah, not that I've seen it. Because that would, that would shift the narrative. They're not allowed to. Doesn't mean it's not happening, though. No, exactly. No, that's that's right. You know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, f uh, going forward with uh, the the media targeting of uh, uh, people such as yourself, uh, Thanos, and 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 Raphael, they were they were basically it, it was it the it was the Australian they were accusing Raphael Fernandez of uh, well, s s s uh, selling uh, crystals to protect yourself from the coronavirus and five G, and implying that he's uh, uh, some con man uh, scam artist. Yeah, I, I heard about that when I was um, did that live with them. I didn't know. I didn't even know about that. So that's well, they've got to create. They've got to demonize us. They've got to demonize anybody that's a dissident. You know, make them to be the bad guys. It's the upside down world, Tim, where everything's upside down. What's good is bad, and what's bad is good. And you know, and, and if you have a different opinion, you're bad because you have to agree. That's compliance. And probably the most vicious. And uh, 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 I, I, I would say biggest uh, uh, pile on uh, shaming of a, a anti-lockdown activist and uh, in the end doxing as well was uh, uh, Eve Black, whose uh, clip of her uh, going through one of the, the, the checkpoints uh, utilizing that script about uh, have I committed a crime, am I disturbing a peace? Uh, she was waved on and then she uh, crossed herself and uh, 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 basically swore in um, in, in joy. Uh, so she, uh, she, uh, she were, uh, that clip went viral. She was uh, uh, viciously attacked on, on social media. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen the, the, the clip. I'll, I'll remind you about uh, uh, what, what, she, what she looks like here. Uh, so then it broke that last last Wednesday uh, she uh, was pulled up at a, a checkpoint in Carlton. Uh, she tried the script again and so police uh, smashed her window to uh, arrest her. And then the Herald Sun on Friday, and I even feel just dirty showing this, it's thankfully blurred, this is an SBS The Feed uh, article, which they quite rightly uh, make the point that this is slut shaming, as they they, they talked about her uh, a career as a uh, exotic dancer and and stripper. Which I mean, uh, you can like it, it's fair enough if you oppose uh, what she did, like going through the the, uh, the checkpoint and and non complying and that. But what's that got to do? Uh, with what she did at the checkpoint. That's just basically tabloid trash at its worst. 
Well, it just shows that, you know, they, they don't like what she did. And obviously, it, it's a lot of people saw that video and they and they thought, oh, that's interesting. Now, that wasn't my script. That was, she she got that from somewhere else. Um, but, but um, you know, she, she told me the, on the Saturday that she wanted to stand up for, for her her rights and she knows that what's happening is wrong and she wants to stand up and she had her go and what I what I love about that video is because it's very much like a like a fight. Like I was a, a professional fighter. You go out, you're all nervous at the beginning before you go out to fight. Then you have your interaction, your your battle and then after if you win, you're so full of um of, of adrenaline but it's like a, it's it's but it's like a, this adrenaline dump that you get. Um, from all the joy that you get after a win. And, and I saw all of that in that video. So it was very human the video. You could see all of those emotions in there. And I think that's why it resonated with a lot of people. And it did go viral. And, you know, so what did the media do? They don't they don't ask, you know, questions whether it was right or wrong. They just shame people. And they demonize people. And anyone that has eyes to see knows that what they're doing is wrong. They're deceiving people. Um, it, the mainstream media lie about about just about everything. They're always lying about things. Um, and we'll talk about that obviously later because we're going to have a chat about you know, some of the, the false narrative that they're creating. But um, to, to do that to someone is is bad taste. It shows dishonor to bring up things that they're more surprised. It's against the values of, of, of this country anyway to go and do that. And anyway, I mean, you know what? Um, you know, when you, I think it exposes what they are. They're not about the truth and they're not about what's right and wrong yet yeah, they'll say things that, you know like on the media they'll say you know um you know she she shouldn't have done that it's disgraceful they'll 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 put it down like that but then the, the, the mainstream media will, will bring out all of, all of this um you know this dirty laundry from someone i mean it is true what they it. published but it's is it newsworthy that is the question well um if you're putting out some truth Right, you know that. Yeah, look, definitely that. But if you're putting out truth and you're creating a massive bias, or you're using, I mean, sometimes the mainstream media would put things in that, like, you know, uh, the the time and the place is is accurate, but everything else is made made up. They they make. I mean, look, they, they've obviously they've called they've called Eve and myself and a number of other bit Thanos and Raf and James Bartolo. They've called all of us um, the ringleaders of a of the anti mask cult. Ringleaders. Now, you know, we, we don't even all know each other. And now I know all of them now because I only met Raphael and um, the other day. I've met Thanos once before, but this is what they do. So they've got a, so that's false. That's that's a false. That tells the cult's false because we're not, we're not, we're not connected um, directly. Well, um, and then. Uh, the Daily Mail, they did an extensive article on all the people they'd come across online, and there was heaps of people that I'd never come across as well. So clearly this uh, so-called cult, it's uh, very decentralized and organic. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, they said that I'm in the cult. I don't know if the cult exists. They might be in a cult, but I'm not a part of it. I haven't been to any meetings. Um, you know, so I don't know, but this is, this is the sort of thing that they do. And I just, I, I hope that more, um, are going to, are going to recognize it in the future. And that is, we've tried to get it out there. We did a rebuttal, um, rebuttal article to an article that came out regarding, you know, my gym, um, like only hours after there was an incident. And, and oh yes, we're going to get into that. Uh, let's, okay, let, okay. Let, let's go on to that uh, now where, uh, because when it was, Start of last week when the Daily Mail started publicizing that your meetings were at your gym every Saturday at 6 p.m. And the implication was that the, the media was egging the, the, the police to basically bust it up uh, like it was some sort of a, a, a pill processing facility or something. And so they they, they turned up there uh, with about... Well, uh, uh, you, you publicized that the meeting was taking place 6 p.m. Saturday. They, they turned up with about 15 uh, police cars. Uh, the media said that they uh, busted up this uh, anti-mask meeting. Is that true? Yep, that's what they said. Yep. Yeah, but is it true that that's what they reported on? Like, did that actually happen? Well, there was no anti-mask meeting. There was no, the gym was closed. We were on a Zoom call with about 40 of us watching the events unfold from our from my cameras 
So I've got my cameras, um, my CCTV, I'm streaming that, and we're all watching. Um, you know, so it was, yeah, it was complete. That's the article that we that we wrote. Yeah, on your John8.net uh, website. Yeah. Um, there was a better article that came out. Um, so that's a rebuttal to a specific article. There was a better article that came out uh, the next day. That's and it was. Um, this it is was the, the the fake news .com .au article. They're becoming news .com .au one of the worst, especially when it comes to fear uh, about further restrictions and that. They're they're just awful. So yeah, and, and I think I think what they're doing with it all is you know is to make people of fear and believe that their their power is justified and to change our our perceptions that we we consider it to be okay or normal or the right thing to do you know i think we, we our con in our conscience we know that it's not right but then if we get bombarded with with articles like this we think oh you know what yeah they've done the wrong thing um and actually it was all a big lie anyway there was no there was no um there was no meeting Hmm. There's no meeting. Now I did I did post it on social media that we we're gonna have a meeting. Um, but I had a feeling inside uh, there was there was no way for me to know that they were gonna turn up. But I, I just had a feeling inside. Sometimes you just gotta trust your gut. So I did. I went, you know what, I all of my my inner group, I, I added them to a private chat. I let them know, look, we're not gonna be running the the event, we're gonna um, we're gonna do a Zoom. And then for everybody else that was prop that was possibly gonna come down to this event our anti-mask meeting which isn't even an anti-mask meeting it's just a it's just a rights meeting um i i basically said look anyone that wants to come to our meeting you need to be cleared by you know by our group and we need to add you to our to our other group um and if you don't get the clear then you know don't come it was a, a way of, of making a filter to people that we weren't sure about that possibly were actors or or karens um weren't able to you know, they, they weren't going to kill. We didn't want people turning up if the police were there and being arrested. That's what we didn't want. Um, so anyway, we had this, we had a Zoom call and we were watching the police turn up, set up roadblocks, 15 police cars and a police, um, and a police uh, van. And that was, that was, you know, a number of my friends. Were they, <laughs> because I've, I've been to, uh, in the past, a lot of, uh, demonstrations where the uh, uh because there's often counter protests they have what's called the the public order response vehicles were they normal police uh uh vehicles or were they public order response um there were different types of vehicles most of them were, were your standard standard vehicles police cars and, and dv vans uh but there were some other ones that were different and one of them was one of those big vans yeah was that a was the van, was the big van was it dark or white? Uh, it was a dark one, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. the 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 public order response vehicles they're dark, so I there should... were some dark vehicles as well. There were some, yeah. To my way of thinking, that if they are serious about containing the coronavirus, they could have spent those uh, three hours worth of resources, maybe doing compliance checks on those who've tested positive, to see that they're at home, the actual people with the uh, the virus, uh, because as far as you know, have you infected anybody with the virus? I, I don't think I don't know if the virus exists. But maybe it does. I've never haven't seen any any evidence of it though. And and what I see on the media, I can't trust because um, you know they're proven to be untrustworthy. Uh, they did manage to uh, arrest, uh, but later release uh, one woman here. Uh, so the uh, the media got their uh, their money shot there. Yeah, uh, so I, I I don't know her. I, I have never met her. I don't know who she is. Um, but I don't think she's a Karen though. She, she I, I actually think she probably was. Someone yeah, she that... didn't look like a Karen. Um, she wasn't being, as the term goes, hysterical. She was just sort of. She looked distressed. Yeah, um, so they, they they set up camp at uh, about 4.30 and they were there till about 9.30. So about five hours they were there. Please. So 15 police cars, uh, the media was there. The media got there not long after the police uh, be, be, were setting up. Because they're an essential uh, service. Uh, they still are under stage four. So if you, and I don't recommend this, watch the 6 p.m. news. They've got all their correspondence uh, uh, out, uh, they, they've probably got all their their uh, special 
uh, papers there. Uh, so, so yeah, fake news is still an essential service. And yeah, and um, and the the best part was when the the nothing had obviously happened, and they weren't able to get you know what they wanted because we weren't there. There was no meeting, so two police cars reversed into the driveway of the gym. And obviously, the gates are shut; they're locked. They reversed to to as far as they could, and they put their their flashing lights on and left the flashing lights on for about 40 minutes at the front of my gym and, uh, until about nearly 9.30. And the only reason for that would be to make it appear to everybody around that there's a crime scene, um, to make it look like, you know, and, to, and maybe to cause the residents um, to, um, you know, to, to make them not trust me or to think that I am a criminal. I, I don't know, you know, but... This, is, this was done. There was no other reason why you would have two police cars right at the front. They deliberately go out of their way to park their cars right at the front of, 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 my, of my gym. They went parked there before and they just left the lights on. They're, they're, they're flashing lights. Like, why would they do that? And what has been the uh, reaction or uh, non-reaction by... Because as I mentioned, uh, this all started back in April during the first... Lockdown. Have you copped any local hate or uh, anything like that? Because you sort of uh, are a mini celebrity now. Well, yeah, I have got a, a bit of hate. I get a lot, a lot more love though. Uh, you know, a lot of people. You know, I probably get about two to three hundred messages a day now, which is a lot of work to reach out because I like to talk to everybody, uh, but I'm not able to do that anymore. Um, but it's very, very rarely I get I get any um, any hate now. But there I do get some. I was getting it on my uh, business page. Mm. I had to shut that down because I was getting. Do, they, do, do say, they say they hope you die? Yep. Yeah, I got hate so to die. That, 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 that's their, uh, uh, we've closed everything down to save lives, but they uh, they want certain people to die. How does that make sense? How is that care and compassion? Oh yeah, I've had a number of them say, "I hope your kids get COVID nineteen and die." Then you'll, you know, think stuff. That's like even that. worse. It's so much worse. And and even though I know it's probably just a bunch of trolls, I just it still affects you because it's just darkness that they're spewing at you. You know, they're spewing venom at you. Yeah, that so there's people have. like that. So I just I just um, went, you know what? Get rid of the Facebook page. It's not worth it. You know, um, I had people saying that there's. You know that it's infested. My gym's infested with rats. You know all sorts of things like that. You know it's so. You know you know. Okay, it's another one of those. But look, truly, there's been a lot of. I think there's a lot a lot of people like us that know that what's happening is wrong, um, and they and they they're happy to support you know, people that are standing up. You know, I know people. I've, I've got friends that have said, "Look, mate, oh, whatever you need." We, we will support you 100 percent because we know what you're doing is right you know and, and not everything i do is going to be right not anything i do the other people are doing going to do is right but if we're, we're all doing our best to do what's right and we're all kind of working together that's a, that's going to be hard for the for the government to control um and i think that people are coming together and, and starting to sh you know share information with each other and help each other out like you're helping me and i'm here trying to, trying to share my story and i'm trying to get the, the truth out on, on my my medium that I can, and then others are doing the same thing. Fan also, if we're all working together and pushing against the narrative, um, eventually there's going to be a critical mass of people, and they don't want a critical mass of people to deal with because they're tr probably trying um, very hard just to hang on to the police officers they've got and, and get them to go along with their their directions from their command. And there's been a huge um, you know uh, turnover of police. A lot of police are leaving. They don't want to be doing that job anymore because of what's what's happening. Uh, we've got a super chat on entropy from the Versace cowboy for three Australian dollars. He says, two part question: Is Nick a proud Western chauvinist who refuses to apologise for creating the modern world? And will Nick be interested in joining the Proud Boys? <laughs> okay. Well, you know. Um, I reckon the Proud Boys, uh, they're, they're doing some good work. I'm, I'm definitely not, um, you know, I'm not, um, I would be considered a, a, a bit of a chauvinistic, you know, 
I guess I would be, but it's hard to know what the where the line is for the definitions because the definitions keep changing. You know, I, I, I yeah. Somebody told me that you don't uh, drink alcohol, which obviously the Proud Boys do drink a lot of alcohol. Yeah, I don't drink. I don't drink at all. So you know, um, yeah, I could be the I could be the driver. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, just having some lime sodas. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone does always need one of those, and you'd obviously do it uh, happily. Yeah, no, that's it. You know, as long as there are not not too belligerent in the car, then no worries. And as long as they clean up any mess they make, not a, not a problem. Oh, there you go, Versace cowboy. All right, now let's uh, go back to talk, uh, talking about it because it was clear that the the media were tipped off that this uh, bust uh, uh, was going to to happen, which uh, uh, didn't happen uh, in the in the end. There's what is termed the political media complex, uh, which what we're seeing during this uh, coronavirus is uh, the mainstream media assisting with the government messaging. Uh, we have, obviously, the uh, state opposition uh, Liberal Party. They're only uh, willing to, to go so far to attack the, uh, the Andrews government. There are some very good uh, uh, Liberal MPs state who are, who are giving it to the Andrews government, such as, as Bernie Finn, MLC. He's the one who originally coined the phrase uh, uh, Dictator Dan and... Uh, uh, Tim Smith, who he, well, he, he came up with the uh, uh, friendless loser uh, phrase uh, uh, as well. So, so there are a few firebrands there, uh, but they, uh, they, they certainly have, uh, haven't, haven't really uh, gone hard against, well, even the, the, the stage three uh, uh, lockdowns when they, when, when they, when they came in. And I've already mentioned that uh, mainstream media, they're still deemed an essential industry. They're already are releasing fear articles about a possible stage five. We're not going to talk about that because it's not healthy for any of us to uh, basically think, think up that. The, the golden rule is don't give government ideas. Now, I remember during the uh, the first lockdown, uh, there was a, a lot of I, I, can't, I don't even know who started this uh, 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 this trend where people were, were were reading through their rights on a script and and smashing their TVs, which seemed a bit silly to just wreck a TV by then. But I actually think smashing your uh, TV now is actually good for your mental health. Watching Absolutely. watching alternative media. Um, not just myself, but uh, other people. Uh, I found watching uh, XYZ Live on, on Monday night with uh, Matty Rose and Dave Hiscock, uh, that cheered me way, mu way much than watching the, the 7, 6 o'clock news or even Sky News uh, for, uh, uh, for, for that matter. Because I find that just uh, listening to and also uh, uh, speaking with like-minded people, it does... It, it, it does help your state of mind during what is a pretty dark time. Um, that's that's what the word church actually means. It means whenever two or more are gathered and they're discussing truth and they edify each other. It just means the word community. That's the original etymology of that of that word. It's just been changed over time. So there is something special about people gathering together and talking about something when you're like when you're like minded. You know, if people are talking politically about what's happening and they're coming up with solutions. And they're talking about those solutions. It's edifying. And then when you start to put it into action, it's edifying. There's something beautiful about that. Um, obviously, with this restrict, with these restrictions, people aren't, aren't allowed to do that. Uh, they they want to stop people doing that. We we've been trying to do that at our at our gym. You know, and, and I know how the Liberal Party works because I was involved with the Liberal Party as a delegate for four years in a row um, until I got got um, basically I, I got thrown out of the. The state council for running a policy motion to open up child abuse cases that implicated politicians and then they got security to get me out so that was my um, that was the end of my my political career in the liberal party uh, but definitely the um we, people coming together um is really important for people's mental health it's very important for their for um 
for I to share ideas with people. It's not the same. You get some out of you know something out of you know being on on you know other media devices. But when you're one on one with people having a discussion, there definitely is it's a different feeling, and it does edify people. I I thrive on that. That's where I get the most joy. Um, you know, I've even I've even discussed opening up my gym as a church and. Because there's the religious exemption, a very strong exemption against what's happening, and I think it's an easier argument to win. Um, but you know, I, even my son today, he he used like my oldest son. I've got you know, four, four little ones, and, and my oldest son said, "Oh, Dad, when are we going to start start doing um, you know training again?" Because I stopped all the kids' classes um, as a result of you know, all the police um, harassment in the area. So my son never liked really doing the MMA training. But now, because he doesn't get to do it, he's like, I, I miss it. I miss it, Dad. I want to, I want to do that. He's thrived. He thrives on it, but he doesn't realise until it's taken away. Yeah, and I've sort of been the same uh, 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 during this uh, uh, lock, uh, uh, lockdown uh, as well, because yeah. I normally uh, di didn't go do, go out much. Most of the time, I'm <laughs> I chain myself to this uh, uh, studi studio uh, desk. But when the, the the pubs were allowed to be uh, open, uh, you're allowed to visit friends. I took that that that, that opportunity. Uh, because uh, I realized during that that time in uh, basic house arrest uh, that uh, you need to live more. And I'm lucky that I'm still young. I'm 30. I can learn from this and appreciate these things uh, go uh, going forward and be a bit more uh, adventurous because I haven't done hardly any overseas travel uh, either. So it's sort of been a, a wake up call in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, like my, my son's been asked, well, even, even um, recently I said to my wife, oh, you know, we should go away and get away. But it's like, when do you get away? There's nowhere mm. to get away to. You know, it's, it's, they've locked it all down, you know, and, um, yeah, I, look, I don't know where it's going to go um, and how, you know, I think it, it's all a matter of, of, of the people deciding when it stops. I think if the people just became, um, you know, they... Yeah, they, or, they, or, they, they yeah or the government yeah. just concedes that uh, they were wrong with this approach and change, change course, but that is a very rare government that will do that. Well, you know, and look, let's give them the, the opportunity. Um, you know, maybe we should send them some notices saying, look, we give you a, a demand that you, you know, give them three demand letters and ask them to, 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 to acknowledge that they're, they're, they're wrong. And, and if they, if they, you know, if they repent, we'll forgive them. And if they don't, well, you know, it's, the curse is on them. <laughs> That's a, that, that is very Christian of you. Well, I try, we try. Sometimes it's hard to be, though. <laughs> Yeah, but um, the police the police have been driving up and down uh, the street where my gym is, um, asking all of the residents and the business owners about me. I've had a lot of phone calls from people that, that are in the area saying, you know, Nick, the police have been asking this, they, they're after you. I've even had the police, because I was still running my gym until, um, until Saturday. Uh, I actually had the police parking at the front of my gym. Not, not parking, but just stopping at the front. The road. Do you reckon they also have un unmarked vehicles as well, just in the street? Yeah, there's some, there's some, you know, that we've got our eye on. Hmm. But you know, when they would stop at the front of our gym, and and people, the only reason that they would do that is to because they won't come onto the property because with the, the no trespassing case law precincts that we've we've put up. And I've well, they can noticed, come in now under stage well, four. Yeah, yeah, I know they, they and they would. I know they would. Um, but anyway, they, but this is before the stage four, right? So but they, what they would do is because they wouldn't come in and the gate would be open. They wouldn't come in. They would just hang out the front. Um, and, and it's like they were doing it so that no one would come into my gym to scare people off. It's like we couldn't beat you. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to wreck your business. Now, there's no other reason for it. It's just stopping at the front to stop people coming into the gym. Uh, and that was a tactic used the week prior to the um, to the incident that happened just last Saturday. 
And you were also arrested uh, today, which uh, you live streamed at uh, Cranbourne uh, train station uh, with your son uh, because you were uh, unmasked. That that is what I uh, refer uh, uh, to to people such as yourself. The unmasks. I don't use that term. Anti-masker. Well, obviously, it's my religious belief, isn't it? Because I'm part of. I'm the leader of the anti-mask cult. <laughs> so I've got to, you know. So I've got to lead by example, but yeah, basically I just said, look, I've got an exemption, you know, and, and my exemption is that I, um, you know, I, it's against my belief and conscience to, to wear it, um, and it's not good for my health. Um, and who's, who's accepting the liability? No one's accepting the liability. They're making you accept the liability for anything that happens. So I just sort of said, look, you know, and they said, well, you need to tell us, you know, what that, why? Um, and I said, well, it's of a private nature. You know, I don't want to disclose that with you. And then they... Um, and it was funny because one of the officers, they were PSO officers, um, and uh, I, I was filming and I was, I, I put the, the camera up close to their, to their name because I wanted to find out, I wanted the, to be able to identify them. Which uh, they legally have to identify themselves. They yeah. have their and I went, ID I went badge. A little, yeah, and I, and I went a little bit too close to one of them and he said, oh, whoa, whoa, back up, social distance. And, and it's hard to take people seriously when they do that. But then moments later, they went and grabbed me and put me under arrest. Hmm. And that, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, is there any thinking or reasoning in there? No, there isn't any thinking or reasoning. They're, they've been occupied. They're the occupiers. That are, someone, but someone's occupying their brain, the space between their ears, because they're not, there's nothing logical about what they're doing. Well, they're just reacting to how they they think they should react in their position, like that Woolworth store manager that you encountered. They just, it's like yeah. they just don't want trouble. That's that, that that's sort of how they're operating at the moment. Yeah, you know, and it's like, well, I'm happy to have a chat with them, you know, but but it's gotten to the point, I think the media has, has done this. They've created this. Oh, yeah, they've network. been... Uh, even worse, this uh, uh, with this second lockdown. I think they, they, they've, they've demonised the word unlawful. You know, uh, for those that don't know that there is a difference between legal and lawful, and unlawful is basically something that's morally wrong in law. Right? It's 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 wrong. It's against your you know um, you know it's like deprivation of liberty and things like that that are you know, anything that, that takes away from your from your you know inherent rights and now that would be construed as is. Um, is unlawful, but legal, anything can be illegal or illegal. I mean, you can, you, they can write something, they can write any legislation. They can write, you know, all the blue eyed babies have to be killed. You know, they could write that into legislation. Um, but so but they've, they've demonized that word in the media, you know. So now if you say, well, that's actually unlawful, they just roll their eyes at you. Um, if you say, um, you know, there's certain terms that you can't use now, you know, if you say human rights, Oh, human rights. Yeah, we no. saw Daniel Andrews in that uh, unguarded moment, which he called uh, frustration. If I hear one more, uh, 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 one more use of the term human rights, seriously, it's about human life. Right, yeah. So, uh, the, the, and that's, that, that has an impact on people. A lot of people go, yeah, yeah, they, they, but the rights is, is the one most important thing, in my opinion, because, and, and I always use the example, you know, if you say you like cars, and you've got a whole collection of cars, but you don't, you don't have the right to drive them, what's the point in having them, right? The rights are everything. When you take away a, a, a little a little bit of a right or part of a right, it ends up being humongous and monumental in how they can use that and twist it. So what they're doing is they're taking away things and they're setting up a, a precedent to be able to take it away again. We know that there, there's, there's no... There's no massive danger to, to people. So they're quarantining all the healthy people. Why are they quarantining the healthy yeah, people? Yeah, which I think is the most uh, outrageous aspect of these lockdowns. Like, fair enough, uh, quarantine the, the people who have the virus, uh, because that is uh, uh, the thing that we're trying to contain, But but and also the vulnerable people as well which well they failed to quarantine the vulnerable people there's there's more aged care outbreaks uh even today there, there was one in uh bayside uh, which is around in i think hyatt so and and, and this is this, this is the thing it's been 
Every, uh, uh, Dan Andrews has consistently blamed the people of Victoria for uh, uh, this virus spreading, where it's been bungle after bungle of government uh, that has made it worse. And you have to trust trust these people when they're not consistent, and when they when they when they lie, or when they say either they're they're liars or they're completely incompetent. Okay, and I don't know which one it is, but they'll say something like. Masks don't work. Don't waste the mask. And yes. then they'll say, you know, you're going to wear a mask. It's like, well, I can't, sorry, I can't trust you anymore. I can't believe you. I've got no confidence in you because I, because you're trying to do what's right um, and what's going to be beneficial to my health, but you don't even know. You, you keep contradicting yourself. So if you contradict yourself, I'm going to make the decisions myself. My own. You know, that, that proves that they're incompetent. Um yeah, anyway, like, like when Daniel Andrews said, uh, please use your, uh, your common sense, uh, my immediate response, well, I'll be the judge of that, thank you. Well, yeah, and all right, so, so common sense, right? So, you know, you're using some discretion. You know, I, I get that, that makes sense. Except, you know, you're not allowed to go to work, you're not allowed to go to church, you, if you, even if you're healthy. You know that because you may be asymptomatic, you may be a carrier. You no, know, it's it's the it's the, the 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 devil that never goes away. You know, it's it's the enemy that's got to be always there. If we allow them to get away with this kind of a precedent, then what's where's the end going to be? You know, it could be another another virus next next month something else because yeah, there because there will be this isn't going to be the, the 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 final virus the the boss uh, virus to use a gaming terminology well and it's amazing how well they've been able to just bit by bit um you know i, I never knew that they would have i never would have fathomed they would have had the capacity to have taken so much away so quick um and but, but the beautiful thing about it is they're making some big mistakes. The media narrative's being um, questioned now. Um, they've been proven to be liars. They've been consistent, inconsistent. And obviously it's coming from the UN. That's why the world's, you know, they're in lockstep together. So what happens is as it goes down the food chain from the from the nations to the, to the states, um, you know, um, things, it's like Chinese whispers. You know, they're, they're, things get, they get missed or mistakes are made and and we're seeing those mistakes and people are looking at it and they're just and people are going you know, people that were you know a month ago saying you know yeah look he, dan andrews is doing his best many okay. of those people now are saying you know we're gonna get rid of this guy you know we need to yeah it, right? I, I've, I've i've witnessed that as well but there, there still are the the uh, the most devotest of the real cult, which is the cult of Dan, who uh, constantly uh, tweet, uh, I stand with Dan and thank him on his Facebook page and saying, oh, it's great to see that uh, all the, 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 the high, uh, highways and freeways, no one's, no one's there uh, after 8 p.m. And I noticed uh, one, uh, one tweet was, oh, he's trying to keep you alive, but... The way things are, the the effect on people's mental health through the effect on their businesses, jobs, and relationships, uh, it's, it's you're more likely to die at the moment just from the the mental anguish. Well, I don't know if I'll keep my business in the future. You know, I'm on the I'm on the cusp of going whether I just do something new now and, mm. and focus on other things that other because I don't I don't know if there's going to be a future for it. Um, I know other people that are, they're in the same boat. Mm. And this is going to cause, and, and families will be uh, being being damaged. We know this. We already know that. You know, and I guess we don't need to go over it. But they, they, what we're what we're the jurisdiction comes from us accepting it and following it. You know, we we all have the power to, to say, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's wrong, and and follow what your conscience says. Um. So when the, when the law says something that's you know, or or you know, like I. I, I don't disagree with you when when I when they create these powers and, and, and say it's not law. But what I you know I, I, yeah it's law. It's a man-made law, right? You, you know it's not from the creator. But when that when the when that higher law is broken, um, it, in my opinion, that makes their law inconsistent and invalid. It's kind of like in the Constitution it says when the law of the state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth. Okay, the, the, the latter shall prevail. Okay, the, the Commonwealth law will prevail if it's inconsistent with 
I think if the law of the creator is inconsistent with with these with these, these state directions or directives, then I'm, I'm not going to regard them. And you know what? Give me all the fines you want. I, at least I'm going to stay in honour and do what's right according to my conscience. I, I, I wish more people would do that, and I hope that they do and start to follow their conscience because there's there's power in that, and, and it has an influence, and it actually inspires other people to do the same thing. We should also make the point that, because uh, you mentioned the, uh, the the federal state powers, all of this uh, this uh, second stage three lockdown and now stage four lockdown, it's all had the blessing of the Commonwealth Government, uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison and the, the Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt, who himself is a Victorian. In fact, they initially lobbied for the, the, the 10 postcode lockdown, and they also backed the literal uh, house arrest of those in the public housing towers. The, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer of the Commonwealth, Paul Kelly, referred to them as a vertical uh, cruise ship. So yes, uh, Dan Andrews is the one enforcing it uh, in Victoria through Victoria Police, or as they're now called, authorised uh, officers. And uh, it's uh, he's uh, enacting the uh, uh, state of disaster powers, uh, but in the background, it does have the blessing of, uh, of Scott Morrison and his government that, yeah, this is what needs to be done. Have you ever been in those, um, those apartment towers? Been in any of those apartments? No, <laughs> I haven't. My, my auntie and cousins grew up in those ones. I grew up in another building, um, and my other auntie lived in another condition. So I know exactly what they're like. You don't want to stay in those houses, you know, those flats. They're tiny. They're, yeah. uh, it's not, you know, that that was that's a horrible thing to do to people. That's completely, you know, there, there's no question. And then, and how how could you get police actually going along with it? And yeah, it? that's that's what I uh, call. Uh, level five lockdown, the the, the literal Wuhan uh, house arrest, as they, uh, as everyone knows, they they welded uh, houses shut. Yeah, they, they put you in they put you in prison, and there's no way to they, you know there's no way to, to, to I don't think they're going to be able to to lock down the whole of the um you know the whole of the state or the whole of the country well, I think because. Well. Yeah, it, it, yeah, if you consider the, what is it, the, you're only allowed an hour of uh, exercise uh, per day now. Uh, how are they going to know if somebody's done oh. 65 minutes of, of exercise, for example? And uh, this is the thing uh, about how the state of disaster suspends uh, uh, some human rights, is that prisoners in Barwon uh, prison are allowed 90 minutes of exercise per day. But... Residents of Melbourne only allowed 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I, I have actually heard you say that before and it resonated with me. It's so obviously clear. But so you have a mind to think, right? And and obviously, you know, the, these these directives are for those that don't have the capacity to think anymore. And I think when anyone that's willing to continue to go along with this, I don't know if they, I have any hope for those people. You know, and I know I should, but I don't know if I do, because I think that we've been given full disclosure of what this government is. It's a government that has no regard for life. They, 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 we know that they're colluding with the media. We know that they're lying about things. We know they're inconsistent uh, in what they say. Um, and yet people are, are still, people can st are still thinking that it's okay to destroy people's businesses and their churches and their congregations and, and, and possibly their families and the economy forever when there is no, it's, it's use of force. Use of force is not meant to be disproportionate. It's disproportionate use of force. For something that's, you know, the, the death's very low, they've, they've destroyed so much. It's like the it's like the agenda, if you thought about the agenda is maximum damage on the economy to destroy the economy, there couldn't be a better way of doing that. Uh, maybe you know, dropping a nuclear nuclear bomb. Maybe that's stage like, six. Maybe that's because we're seeing that. It looks like that's playing out over in Beirut. You know, There's yeah, like which yeah, it happened more than ten hours ago. We still don't know what the cause was. Yeah. So you know, and that's that's. And, I mean, I, I definitely don't want to end up in that situation where that's happening. Because um, that's the reality; it is happening. But definitely, we're not we're not being given full disclosure 
Um, I don't think there's any logic to what they're doing, and so there's no reasoning for it. You know, I, I can't even bow down to the to the to the conversations now to be able to engage in a conversation with people about it if they still believe that this is this. You know, they're they're doing the right thing, and oh, we've got to stop the COVID spread. I'm like, yeah. hey, so if, you, if you still think that, then you know, there's no point in me having a conversation with you because. You, you know what you want to believe a lie. The evidence is there. You're not got no interest in actually looking at what truth is and and discussing it. You uh, you have to leave it up to them to figure it out for themselves because the Victorian people I've noticed and also the Australian people at large, they're still extremely passive about accepting that these lockdowns are the only way out of of this. Uh, uh, pandemic and uh, they are swallowing the the Andrews government line uh, that uh, uh, the the the, sp uh, the community transmission of the the virus is due to uh, rule breakers. But other states and territory had uh, lockdown law breakers, yet uh, there wasn't this level of a community transmission. And uh, well, we were once called the world's most livable uh, city. Now we're, pro we're we're one of the world's most unlivable uh, cities. Where we're in the the international headlines for the long reasons. And I I did I I did know given uh, 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 given the 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 culture of uh, inner Melbourne and the fact that Dan Andrews won a landslide re-election in 2018, that we were on the path to being the next uh, California, California, New York or Melbourne, the, yeah. the next Portland or Seattle. But when it hits you that uh, that's what Melbourne's become, it's like, wow, like it, you're not seeing it like it's on TV anymore. It's actually happening uh, in your in your in your city, I can't imagine uh, what it would be like to be, like we're not as bad as Portland and Seattle at the moment, yeah. but you can, like you're getting a sense of it. Yeah, and I, look, I really hope that people don't get down about it and they keep their spirits up because there's still a lot of us. There's still a lot of people that are, um, and because this government's so out of control, um, he's, he's a maniac, mm -hmm. um, then. You know, we're going to get some more to the ranks. I think the critical mass is building, and there's different people that have that have their 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 um, followings and their their groups, and they're all sort of coming together because you know what you can you can you, you don't have to agree with everything. You know, we don't agree on a lot of things. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, because mm. we I've want, disagreed like, with you tonight. Yeah, on, yeah. on several matters. Yeah, and you know what? Because I and I know that I'm not right about everything. I'm, I'm wrong about a lot of things, and I listen to people. You know, that's 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 the best way to be able to learn. Humility is so important. You know, to be able to, mm. to learn. But you know, like if all these people are coming together, and because we used to be all sort of all the groups were divided, you know, and very much divided. Now they're coming together, and it's 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 quite organically um, happening where people are. It's just it's, it's 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 man to man, man to woman, woman to woman. That's what's bringing it together through just conversations. It's not like some ordered script, or, mm. you know, it's not regimented. And there's some power in that because the connections are much deeper. It's not that one thing connecting people. It's all these different people together, all into, coming into woven. And there, that's the critical mass that's quite strong. And we all agree that this dictator has to go, that, the, uh, that they're lying to us, and that needs to be exposed, and we need to get our rights back. Uh, one way or another. If I can throw in another uh, uh, Simpsons uh, reference, or Simpsons already did it reference, I'm not sure if you're a fan of the show, uh, but there's the the, the Camp Krusty uh, episode. Uh, I feel like we're in Camp Krusty at the moment, where where Dan Andrews is Mr. Black. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm if you're seeing that. Episode. I do remember that. Hmm. Like, yes, and uh, what is it, uh, Jimbo, Dolph, and Kearney, they're the, the camp counsellors. The... Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, that's right, and they just go and just, just cause mayhem mm. on all these other kids, but they're, they're given the authority. It's like yeah, they're the worst uh, people, and they're given all the authority. Yes, and, they, right. and they're fed not even uh, gruel, but imitation gruel. Imitation well, gruel. with the, the abattoirs apparently reduced to uh, two-thirds capacity, now uh, uh that'll uh, we'll see how that'll affect the, the 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 meat supply but that's that that that's obviously a, a reduction in our dietary choices 
Yeah, that's that's going to be that's going to upset a lot of people too. You know, they're, they're, it's like they're doing, they're attacking everything. Everyone's got something that they're going to, you know, like you know, you attack people's food. Well, they've already shut down all the all those uh, restaurants, and, and a lot of them won't won't open back up. So that you've got them you, now. They're they're attacking all these other businesses. So they're going to be, oh, you know what, um, you know, but, you know. So we're going to get we're going to get the numbers, uh, and they're going to start joining our different groups. You, you know. And I reckon you're going to get a lot more. No, you, you've got a pretty good following, but it's only going to go up because because people are looking for this kind of information. They want to see the truth from real people, and they want to see true news, you know, genuine news. Well, the Unshackled, uh, uh, since we started, we covered the the activism of the Australian Patriot Movement, which was around from. Uh, 2015 with uh, Reclaim Australia, then United Patriots Front, and the government and the media thought that they, they'd they crushed it at the beginning of this year because they banned all the groups from Facebook and, and YouTube and that. And uh, I, I, I messaged uh, uh, Blair Cottrell yesterday to say, oh, it looks like you're, you're no longer uh, public enemy number one of the state of Victoria. How do you feel about that? It might be you or, or Thanos or, or Raphael. And his reply was, well, you're still allowed on on, on Facebook and YouTube at this stage. At this stage, yeah. Now I've spoken to Blair a couple of times. Um, he, he's got a, you know, a few friends that I that I have as well. Um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, he he's got a very different way of, of doing things than I do. But I I support the, the guys. You know, all the guys that are, that are fighting against the actual enemy. Mm. You know, I'm not going to fight with them. You know, yep, yep. You know, you try to you work. We all work together. Mm. It's good that you guys. How much has your um, your audience grown? Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's continued to grow organically, though we, uh, uh, because of, well, our, our coverage of the Patriot movement in the past, we're severely shadow banned on, on Facebook, YouTube plays tricks on us uh, all the time, uh, because social media censorship is just, uh, well, it, it's continued to, to, to ratchet, ratchet it up uh, this year. Uh, one of our, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Richard Wilsoncroft, who uh, hosts the report from Tiger Mountain, his uh, recent uh, report, uh, which uh, uh, repeated the uh, very uh, still true possibility that uh, the coronavirus uh, escaped from a bioweapons facility in Wuhan, that got a a, a, a false information uh, sticker on it from Facebook. Fact, fact checkers. Mm. Which yeah. is... It's clear that it's targeted at his politics because they don't say that it's not true, but there's not enough evidence. That's the thing. They say there's not enough evidence. There's evidence to suggest it, but in their view, there's not enough evidence for them to, uh, to permit him to say it freely without sticking a warning label on it. Yeah, well, our, our Vimeo channel was shut down. Solutions Empowerment's Vimeo channel was also shut down. Um, for sharing the, um, the the video with the, the doctors and the congressmen in the US talking about that hydro hydroxychloroquine, which is yeah. uh, banned as a poison in Victoria. Have you seen that notice? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, um, so you know, it was actually I noticed that I, I knew my friend's um, solutions empowerment and his immune channel was shut down for that. But then I saw that mine was shut down. It was actually uh, when I loaded up that that article for on my website as a rebuttal to the article that came out from news.com. And I finished that at about three in the morning. And then I had to spend another three hours, you know, downloading all those videos from Vimeo, um, getting the links sent to me so that I could then put them somewhere else and load them back up on the website. So it's very hard to kind of do any sort of activism because you kick it against the pricks. What they do is they everything everything is against you because it's there they create the platforms for the most part and they um and, and, and the technology is controlled and, and um, manipulated by them so you know as i was up till about six in the morning that morning um you know we spent I spent you know a couple of hours on zoom trying to teach people then i see an article comes out so then i i do we do a rebuttal article so that was that was till three o'clock in the morning and then there's now there's my my channel's been taken down so my website, all the videos are gone. So then I've got to then load all of those back up. And this is the sort of treatment that we get. It's mm. obvious that the censorship's huge, but that, but that, all those people that saw that and saw the censorship, I think 
you know, they've at least, at least the seeds planted in them that something is wrong when the government and these big corporations partner up and they censor such important information. Uh, the, 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 there was two press conferences from America's frontline doctors about hydroxychloroquine. And uh, d despite what some people initially claimed, they were all qualified licensed doctors. Uh, if, they, if they had any history of negligence or, or malpractice, they would have had their licenses taken taken off them. And they've especially gone after that uh, Nigerian educated doctor, uh, Dr. S uh, Stella uh, Emmanuel. I'm not sure if you've uh, seen, seen that meme about, uh, lis listen to the medical experts. No, not that one. Elevate black voices. No, not hers. Wow, I have not seen that one. Yeah. Well, that's, that's shocking, isn't it? And they've gone after her uh, religious views because she believes in demons and, and alien DNA, which... Yeah, you might think is kooky, but it doesn't mean she is, uh, 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 she, she's not a competent doctor. I mean, there'd be uh, uh, people who, who'd think that you're kooky for believing in a, in a, in a man in the sky and uh, uh, believing that a work of fiction uh, is, is the word of, of that man in the sky. Well, you know, like I, I, I believe what I believe and it's my belief and we have our own reasons for our belief. And you know what? And I know people that have very different beliefs, but I, I, I listen to them. I listen to people. I think you learn a lot. People that think differently um, have a lot to I, And I think it's the problem is we're, we're, under, we're under the spell of group thing. Where, you know, it's like you're not normal. So there's this group that's apparently normal. You're not normal if you think any different to the way everybody else that's indoctrinated by mainstream media thinks. Um, whereas actually a lot of the, the strangest, oddest people, if you speak to them, you actually learn a lot from them. You find out that there's a lot of beautiful things about them that you don't, you won't recognize if you judge them straight away. But if you don't judge them and you look at them, because I, you know, I'm of the belief that God makes us who we are and he makes us who we are for a reason. And he gives us different abilities. So, um, and it's an easy way to attack people because I think most people um, generally um, un they're under that spell of that's that's a bit odd, you know, and, and oh, that, that's not normal. Um, whereas you know, it takes a while to sort of come out of that that group think ideology that of what normal is. I mean, who defines what normal is? Who defines it? Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, openly an atheist. I don't believe it's possible in in my mind that there's a a, a god. But I have discussions with uh, Christian friends of mine uh, about the uh, about uh, my beliefs and and their uh, beliefs. Their 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 discussions that that uh, that that make you think, both make them think and make me think as well, which is healthy. I think it is, you know, and, and you know, but, but then, you know, you're not allowed to think about certain things now and express those because if you do, um, it might be offensive. You know, this is, this is what's happened. You see how it's just gradually, bit by bit, they've added, they've molded the way that we, um, we, we communicate and, you know, like, like things that I would have said, um, you know, years ago, I have this thing comes over me where I think, oh, can I say that? Mm. And I have to push past that. And it's because we've been indoctrinated. Oh, obviously, I don't watch the media, mainstream media at all. Um, Do you I, have I, a, 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 like a, a proper TV in your, your I, house? I haven't had a proper TV for about uh, four or five years, <laughs> maybe five years. Uh, but, but remember, I spent my whole life watching TV. Mm. So it's, it's, it, its effects have still, they're still in my mind. I, I'm still overcome somewhat. I haven't been completely freed from it. Mm. Uh, you sort of, I, I sort of, with all the the, the fake news uh, spewing out of, well, I'd say terrestrial uh, television and and satellite television, it's now the idiot box more than ever now. And with the the the, the uh, so called smartphones, uh, where you can get all the the news alerts and that, uh, they're becoming more stupid phones because they're just feeding you a narrative. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't even get a narrative because all I do is get messages from people now but, and phone calls. So I don't get any time to, to even do that. But, you know, like, the, the, we, need, we need to be reading books again, getting some good books. Read. There's something special about reading a book because you have to, you have to create the images in your brain. Mm. You look at those words, you have to formulate it. 
and it makes it expands your mind. If you're just being shown the image, you don't have to train your brain. It's just like it's like you're um, instead of doing hard strenuous labor, you just sit in some machine, the machine's doing it all for you, and you just waste away. That's what's happening to people's brains because they're not they're not thinking anymore, and that's and we're not reading a lot, and we're definitely not reading a lot that's thought provoking, and and then and now we're not even having many of those discussions because we're not able to have those discussions. With we should uh, uh, take solace, though, that uh, we do still have uh, our free speech uh, for now. And I do uh, agree that uh, uh, with, with Thanos's view that now is not the time for rallies because you're just going to be blamed by the people you're trying to convince uh, that you're spreading the virus. So now is the time for, for education. And depending on how the, the curve plays out, I mean, the curve went up again today, uh, people are going to think more about why, uh, why things are not working. But certainly the cult of Dan, they would love all of us charged with uh, sedition and uh, have us arrested for being uh, threats to, to, to public safety. Uh, I've seen that uh, on on, on Twitter, which just shows you, you may think the, the, the people who are in power are bad, but some of their supporters, they are even worse. Yeah, and, and it, it all goes back to that Milgram experiment. I don't know if you're familiar with the Milgram experiment. I, I explain it for our audience. Uh, basically, uh, there's, there's different versions of the experiment, but essentially it's um, if there's somebody in authority, uh, the conclusion is that there's someone in authority um, uh, and there's someone that's somebody that's in their power or they believe in their power, they will follow the directives of the one in authority to the point of killing somebody. And it's, the, it's, it's well over half of the people that have gone through these different, four, different types of experiments will um, Basically, if someone's in authority telling them to do something, they will do it to the point of killing somebody. Hmm. Whereas, um, you know, the smaller percentage will will stop somewhere before the person's dead, the man or woman's dead, and they'll say, "Look, I can't do this." Their conscience will kick in. Um, so the authority the authority figure is the is the um, basically that that's the device that switches off the conscience for a lot of people. So that they're not operating in their conscience anymore. Uh, but then equally, when somebody stands up to authority and, and shows that the authority is wrong, immoral, and evil and stands up, that inspires people as well. It works in reverse when somebody does that. So um, so that I, I guess we've got to be doing more of that and standing up to them in the face of adversity and, and all the rest of it and doing what's right. And that will, people, I think, will be inspired by that. Uh, Tuesday's press conference was the first time uh, we saw uh, Police Commissioner Shane Patton uh, for a while. Uh, the, the less we see him at the press conferences, the, the better. He was asked by uh, a journalist about, are you going to take down you know, anti-lockdown Facebook posts? And he said that, no, they haven't asked Facebook to take down any posts. They would only take action if there's an incitement to unlawful activity, which is pretty standard for law enforcement and Facebook policy. Uh, but it was also interesting, he said that he's also not concerned about what happens that fines are issued if they're contested or whatever. They just want to get the, the, the fines out there as sort of the the deterrence. Like they, they may, uh, Victoria Police, uh, sometimes they, they have one of the commissioners announcing the, uh, the, 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 the fines, otherwise it's through... Uh, a statement, but it's always like we've issued these fines for uh, uh, these reasons. It was interesting. He was on uh, seven thirty with Lee Sales last night, who's in self isolation because she's got a cold and got a coronavirus te uh, test. He said that curfew is making it easier to catch real cri criminals. Who, obviously, if they're criminals, then they're not going to obey a curfew. And sort of the people who say that, like, for example, the person who went to Wodonga for a Big Mac or the person who was out at four in the morning uh, to, to go to a bottle shop, uh, you, you sort of think maybe they were out for some other reason. Yeah, I, I did hear that about the... Uh, actually, what's interesting about what you said with the, um, with the fines, it just, it just 
he's and he's a, he's a new police commissioner too. Yes, he's, uh, for Graham well, Ashton. he's basically been running the show since Graham Ashton was on sick leave so much during his uh, time as police commissioner. Yeah, um, but it shows that that's just a mechanism. It's just a mechanism to control people. These fines. Mm. You no, know, I mean, I, I I did get a fine, and I did I did you know, I just opted to go to court, um, and I haven't heard back from them. No, and, I'm, I, and, I, and I would like to go to court over it because I think that we can set a precedent. Well, the courts, are, like, they're, uh, they're, they're shut down at the moment. There's going to be such a, a backlog of not just these fines, but all other criminal matters as well, because there are still ordinary uh, crims committing crimes. What's there are. They're not going to stop doing crimes. Yeah. And, and now they can wear masks everywhere. So oh, yeah, but... With the curfew, that means that there should be no African gang home invasions now because they'll be breaking curfew. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so you got to see, look at the positives there, right? Mm. Funny, it was, funny it was like that. Because I know uh, that uh, Cranbourne has been a, a African youth gang crime hotspot, yeah. not as bad as over in the West, but you've had some trouble. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty bad over here. Um, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, what, what do we do, you know? Mm. What are your suggestions? What do you think needs to happen? I'm going to interview you for a bit. What do you think needs to happen, Tim? Needs needs to happen. What do you think, what do you think the, the government, what do you think needs to happen to um, to basically get our government to, um, to acknowledge fault or to stand down and, and or, or to break the, the restrictions, like, or to change? Well, we've seen them double down on their uh, Daniel Andrews not taking responsibility for their own stuff ups, uh, continuing to threaten Hector, Nanny, us at, 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 at every turn. So what I said before, them to because the well, we now know that the initial uh, uh, stage three lockdown back in uh, April, uh, uh, April and May didn't work well i don't think we even did have a a first wave uh because a we had very low levels of community transmission and it was basically shutting the international borders that basically eliminated the virus in in mo most of australia so we actually haven't had a first wave like uh, europe uh, north america latin america uh did and so Victoria is seeing a legitimate first wave, given the massive, uh, massive amounts of community transmission that we're seeing, and uh, so you can easily get be more infected with the virus now. I actually know people now who've been infected with the with the virus and have and are feeling like a a, 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 a a feeling a load of crap at the moment, or feeling like crap. Uh, but they'll they'll recover because most of they're them gonna recover, aren't uh, yeah, they? I, I, uh, because they're yeah. they're they're young. Uh, we're seeing the rest of the world uh, experiencing a second wave. Uh, the uh, the UK they opened up, but they're beginning to shut down again. And it's Europe and North American summer there, so you can imagine how bad it's going to be uh, during their their winter, which is around uh, Christmas time. I mean. The, the yep. silver lining in this through government incompetence, we could actually reach in Victoria herd immunity. And so we could get the, 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 the bad medicine, which is the, the, the lockdowns over with quickly. And it could, because you could, Western Australia, South Australia, New Zealand, which have eliminated the, uh, the virus, elimination only works if you stay closed forever, which is, it is almost in, in, impossible. So the virus is, as with all the, the pandemics that we've had, the virus never goes away. There's just herd immunity. That was very, very well said. I think you... you so um, the problem, I think, I guess the problem is that, that you know, that that's logical. Um, but I, I don't think, you know, when you've got dictator Dan in there and his cronies, they're not going to let that happen. They're not going to... Because they've got power. They, they never get rid of the power. They love the power. They yeah, hang on to it as long as they can. We, we are, and this is the point that I make, we are virtually a police state uh, on the ground on paper. Uh, but as uh, Dan Andrews has conceded, uh, they, they can't even in, enforce uh, the, uh, uh, the people who have tested positive 
isolating. Because what was that? The last information we got, 800 of the 3,000 that were door knocked were not at home. And given the positive cases keep going up and up, that's more people they have to repeatedly door knock uh, multiple times to check that they're at home, even though they are getting more ADF down. Like they're like, this is the thing. They're, they're, they're just having to keep up with the, the people have already tested positive. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just interested to see how far he's going to go because he's gone, in my opinion, he's gone so far beyond what I ever would have thought that we were capable of. And the people have accepted it um, as a majority, I think. Majority have accepted it. They they, they, they have uh, still the uh, the overwhelming majority are accepting it, but the, the 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 people who have basically like there are people who flip to basically thinking, yeah, Dan has our uh, best interest at heart to basically saying dictator Dan. Yeah, and that's where my hope is, mate. It's my hope is that when we get more of them. Um, you know when it gets. When they start to do things wrong, and 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 then you kind of like, I actually kind of wanted to keep going. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's it's basically because it's been for a political follower like myself. Dan Andrews has had so many scandals, stuff ups, wasted so much money, but he's been able to get away with it to this point uh, because there's there's not much scrutiny but this has basically exposed his house of cards on a massive scale so it is it, it, it's basically a form of accelerationism excel, that this uh, virus has brought his his government to his knees to the point now well we don't even know if we have a chief health officer at the moment brett sutton is apparently on on leave i don't know what chief health officer takes leave during a pandemic uh, but you know that's the state of things was it the chief health officer that was giving? Who was it that was giving questions regarding their um their application of um um they were, they were getting questioned. I think it was um um Gordon Rich Phillips, maybe that was that was. Speaking. He's one of the Liberal shadow ministers. Yes. Yeah, it was asking. I can't remember who they were asking, but basically they 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 were they were they were refusing to be accountable. And answer, um, yeah, that was Jenny McCarkos yesterday, her parliamentary performance, where she that's just it, didn't that's answer. It, yes. Yeah, I mean, let's, so if you can't make your government, um, your, your government accountable, then they're they're invalid. They've got to be accountability. They're meant to. If they they claim they made the claim that they represent the people, so they have to be accountable to the people. And when they refuse to be accountable, I think he was saying that that's contempt. You know, they were in contempt of the parliament. So that's probably one avenue that we should we should pursue, and people should be you know. You can still uh, email your local MP to to tell them uh, what you think in a in a in a civil manner, uh, because they 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 can. I I know from from inside knowledge that they can filter it, but the emails they they're going to be delivered, or the mail is going to be like the Australia Post mail is still going as well uh so and they, they do have an effect like uh you can still call up your your your, your local mp there's still a lot of recourse that the the, the people have yeah and I, I wonder if, if a lot of us aren't doing that you know we, we probably do need to do more of that and get people you know really hammering the, uh, the local members um you know i think a lot of people just that i know don't just don't they, they don't like politicians at all Mm. They think that they're all a pack mm. of liars. That, that's in my community, you know, and my family. But, um, you know, I mean, I guess we should be giving them the benefit of the doubt and say, all right, well, this is what we think, you know, and, and, and if, if we all have it, and we, we might have to see a little bit of a result. I, I don't know. You know? Mm. Um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Another silver lining is, is that even Wuhan uh, residents were released from their their, their 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 house arrest which if if the residents of Wuhan are you know free as you can be in a communist nation then there's help for Melburnians. well have you ever seen the constitution of China the Chinese constitution it's actually very similar to ours it's very similar to the US oh um, yeah I, the, 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 the Soviet uh, constitution was the gold standard in uh, yeah. Orwellian uh, newspeak yep that's that's what it is yeah mm. yeah um, so, so yeah 
I, I don't know how the curve is 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 going to go in the next uh, ne next uh, uh, six weeks. Um, so, because uh, we're just seeing community transmission and active cases continue to uh, uh, to grow, uh, they'll either go down because there'll be some sort of herd immunity or just uh, keeping people apart uh, for. Uh, for uh, for so long, um, and then there's also the third possibility that they'll admit that that they were wrong, uh, which is the I'd say the least likely of those three scenarios. Yep, it'd be nice though, wouldn't it? You know, I, I don't see that happening. I don't see much honesty in the, um, the current government. They li they've lied in the past. They they've got you know all these scandals. Uh, you know, that they're trying to cover up. They, they're not accountable when we ask them to be accountable. You know, I've sent notices in and, and, and letters and to um, the, you know, the, the, um, the Commission of Taxation to the, the Ombudsman of Taxation and, and I, I've had, you know, I haven't received anything uh, from them. Any, and they've never responded to my, um, you know, to my questions, to legitimate questions. So I know that they're not accountable. So I can only assume that the, the rest of the government would, Probably be probably be similar, but you know I don't know. You know they they might. I don't know how how controlled it is. I don't know what, how much of a club it is. I have I was in a Liberal Party for for a little over four years, um, and there is, there are factional groups in there that have their own sort of agendas. Um, but I think you know, that we still have the, the the numbers, and they don't. And I think if they keep pushing really really hard and become more and more totalitarian. They're going to lose more and more police officers. You know, and they're going to probably. Well, we they, they might have lost a, a chief health officer. We don't, we don't know. That's in limbo. Yeah, and and then they've got to. They'll probably need to then, if they continue with it, deputise. You know, who knows? We can lower the standards. Well, well we've seen the standards lower. Yeah. Well, when they what is it? Move sideways. Uh, Doctor Annalise Van Diemen Friday night. They brought in three uh, deputy. Uh, chief health officers so yeah they're they're as yeah it, it's it's definitely not a good look for them to be uh, moving people around and let's not forget uh the andrews government's uh own uh, corruption scandal where they lost three ministers uh recently in between the 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 the, the free window uh, shall we call it uh, of this uh, pandemic so, you know, if they're, if they're, that's where education comes in. Education is, I think, the most important tool is to, to teach people. That's why people can speak to police and, 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 and in a dignified way and not just belittle them and, and abuse them, not smash, maybe smash their heads into the, into the ground in the concrete because they're like, like what ha apparently what happened in Frankston. Yeah, yeah, um, that was, um, yeah, that was horrible where, uh, yeah, the police uh, just asked this 38-year-old uh, woman why she wasn't wearing a, a, a mask and, and just did that. But she was referred to an, as an anti-masker, so it implied that she was a member of your cult. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe I know her. Maybe she is. Maybe she comes to our, our secret, um, secret lair meetings. I, oh. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but, uh, no, look, I think, I think, look, you know, they, they've got to try to get the people to go along with this, this agenda. You know, they've, they've put a plan forward, you know, this is what they want to do, and this is how they want to do it, and they want to do it in this way. Um, but the way that they've, they've planned and the way they've gone about it is just causing destruction everywhere. I think it's like they've, they've, they've basically gone the route of maximum, maximum destruction. And I don't think Daniel Andrews is... Incredibly stupid. I don't think he's that stupid to actually do that. Although I didn't think the police would be that stupid to turn up to my gym with fifteen police cars when I wasn't there either, and they mm. did. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, 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 I still uh, hang on to my libertarian principles that uh, governments and their agencies, uh, they're more incompetent and stupid than uh, conspiratorial and to uh, to uh, totalitarian. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and, and you're probably right, but but I mean, what I mean is that they definitely have an agenda. The agenda, whether it's conspiratorial or not, they've got an agenda. We're going to get this done. 
this is our plan, this is how we're going to implement it, right? But it's, 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 good it's or... just like they think it's going to work, though, because the first yeah. lockdown was that let's just lock everything down, fingers crossed, it'll work. That's basically what it was. And, and that shows the pride because they're not, they're not admitting that, oh, you know what, we stuffed up. I haven't heard, I haven't heard, Dan, have you heard Daniel Andrews, um, you know, apologise for anything? No. I mean, like, no, so there's no apology. So that's just pride. They, it's like they know they're wrong, but they're still going to continue to go along with it to make it right somehow. And it's only going to get worse. Mm. It's only going to hurt more people and make more people angry. Mm. And then people are, you know, people are, uh, get, some of them are getting to the point of, you know, possibly having those violent, those violent feelings and that towards, towards say other place. Cause I've, I speak to lots of people and I always tell them not to be like that, you know, just don't let it get to you. But they've just, it's, they've hit their limit already and they're angry and they just, oh, I just hate the police. Oh, I'm just saying, it's like, we well, don't hate them. Yeah. Which is, you know, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Which is why, going back to what we talked about before, just talking to, to like-minded people, it makes those sort of, yeah. you know, either angry thoughts or sad thoughts, it, it helps them go away. I certainly wouldn't call up the, 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 the government mental health line. I'd call up one of my friends to, to, to make me feel better about what's going on. Yeah, and, and, and I guess, you know, like the point I'm trying to put forward is that this is what they're creating. With their actions against the people because they're making claims that that aren't valid and they're not accepting the liability for, for their actions and and that's the key part liability so who's liable for those re restaurants and businesses that have closed down and uh, 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 yeah, yeah the government's never accountable for all the incompetence that uh, uh, that they do it's only uh, ordinary citizens and businesses. Yeah, yeah. But then, if you don't, but if you don't go along with what they, what they, you know, their directives, they'll they'll turn up to your gym with fifteen police cars and and try to, you know, and, and park at the front of your gym to scare off all your all your your business, you know, all your patrons, and, and, and do things like that. So there is there is an element of, um, you know, like a nasty element to it. Because I, you know, and then and then park at the front of your gym with their lights going for forty minutes. So that's that's just nasty. That's just that's just, and that's where it's like, well, hang on, what's the agenda? Is it to help people? If it's to help people, I've and I've said to the police before. I said, look, I'm gonna, I'll close the, the business down when you provide the evidence that it's valid, and this is the evidence that I need. Um, otherwise, you know, and and they won't they won't do that. They'll they'll destroy my. I even had the council harass me. Um, about my gym. They, they said, well, when did you need to get a permit? I don't need to get a permit. There's well, no permit you're in the city of Casey, aren't you? Yeah. You, you right. have no elected representatives at the moment. The council was sacked by, ironically, uh, Adam Somniac uh, back in February. I interviewed, uh, well, my <laughs> former uh, city of Casey councillor, Rosalie uh, Crisani, on the eve of the second uh, stage three lockdown and she is devastated she can't represent her community anymore yeah and it's sad because they you know like they it's basically you know they, they've been they've been doing dodgy deals and collecting collecting money from these big developers and being bribed and embezzling money and that's that's you know that's what they've been doing and then so for, so that was my thing when they when they rang me i said well hang on i don't trust you guys when you guys you know, wasn't Casey Council involved in embezzling all of that money? And you know, I just sort of put it to them, and they said, "Oh no, but you need a, you need a, you need a permit." I said, "Well, what permit do I need? I'm looking on your website, and there's no permit for what I do. You know, I'm not I'm not operating on council land. You know, the public land. I'm so I need private property." And then they said, "So then I went, oh, okay." And then and then I, they rang me up again. This is after I've had these interactions with police. They rang me up again. Said, oh look, we need to, and I've and I, I've spoken to the council once in ten years, and then I get two phone calls um, after the, I have the incident with the police, right? And they're both very um, invasive you know, conversations, but they're asking. Uh, so the second time they rang and they said, well, we just want to come in and do a building inspection on your building. I said, how's no sound? No, and and I said. Oh, and they said, he said to me, "Oh, well, why?" I said, "Well, because I think that you're you're up to no good, and you're trying to um, you're trying to create a controversy against me. You know, don't pretend you're not." I just spoke to him like that, and he said, "No, no, no, it's honourable. 
you know, I said, well, you know what, not interested. But that's the sort of thing that they, oh, you want the salt? Okay, I don't know where it is. Mm. Okay, all right, you go get it, mum will get it for you. Right, that that, that, that might be a good... Uh... <laughs> good cue to start start wrapping things yeah. up uh, because... but that's but that's the that's the sort of stuff that's happening like at the lower level so the government does something here and then the the, the police and the other agents under here start to do things and as it goes down it becomes into a bit of a mess and then it then it, it's almost like there's vendettas if you don't go along with what they say because they've got this supposed authority and if you challenge it you're like this bad and it's not even about what's right or wrong now it's about no we we've got to be we've got to win it's like well hang on Let's be moral about it. What's right and wrong, um, and that's that's been my issue from the beginning. I know it's wrong what they're doing, because that you don't have no. We never gave the government power to destroy everyone's businesses, possibly families, and and to cause this kind of destruction. But uh, they're doing it anyway. They're appointing themselves and giving themselves that kind of power, um, and then they're deputising all these people underneath them. Um, and so, but anyway, look. Uh, one thing I do want to say is hopefully the people stand up when it's time to stand up and and not aggressively you know stand against it and just say i'm not doing this anymore um and it's wrong and, and well, there, mm, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the, the 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 vaccine. The only way out of this pandemic is is with a with a vaccine. But there's never been a vaccine developed for a strand of uh, coronavirus, and all the uh, the the hopes of one and this is putting uh, your views on vaccines to one side have have not amounted yeah. to uh, anything um yeah well um so it's almost like we've, we've been pushed into that into that narrative you know that is this is your way out we're going to cause we're going to cause harm to you we're going to destroy everything unless you do this it's it's their way of signing, getting you to sign a sign a contract with them. It's almost like siege tactics from from you know from ancient Rome, and it's actually very Roman because the Romans always use bribery. You know the Roman and bribery; they'll give people benefits for things if they do go along with Rome's jurisdiction, um, and they and they penalise those that don't. Well. Uh, we still haven't uh, in uh, Victoria seen uh, mandatory uh, coronavirus testing of all uh, citizens. I don't know whether they've got the capacity to do that, but I think judging by what Jenny McCarkos has said uh, uh, in the past, that uh, even though they've suspended uh, some of our human rights, that they still, well, I'd have to check um, you know, what, what rights they've suspended, but uh, they haven't uh, spoken about that yet so uh they haven't gone that far in that regard to medical treatment and this is uh, uh, uh so it doesn't uh they haven't indicated th there's no official indication that we'll be forced to uh to, uh, to take a, a a vaccine but i know better uh, by now to sort of say oh, i don't think they'll do that because you know so who it just knows? changes day to day whatever they say they could completely do a backflip. They've mm. done it already. They've shown us that they'll do that. Yeah. Well, to, uh, Dan's press conference tomorrow. Um, hopefully now he'll be in the the, the hot seat. Asked about uh, why isn't uh, Dr. Brett Sutton uh, by your side? Uh, where is he? He'll be he'll be finally under the heat. We'll have less time to to lecture and hector us. Yep, we can only hope, mate. Mm. Only hope. <laughs> well, I'll end you with uh, 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 this uh, uh, farewell, uh, which is uh, uh, please stay safe. Uh, I wish you well. Uh, thanks again for joining me. And yeah, uh, well, uh, predicting the future is now Mugs game. We can just take it well, almost one half day at a time now. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks so much for having me on. And and getting the message out and just showing that the, the the media the media narrative is completely false you know they they they, they say one thing but it's it's not true and um and, and being a platform for us it's a beautiful thing i appreciate it mm. and um you know we'll keep fighting the good fight brother yeah. do not watch this is a rec recommendation to all of you do not watch any mainstream media anymore for your own health do uh, do not watch it you don't have to watch me but just uh, uh, just don't watch the mainstream media.
yeah. and you can check out uh, Nick's uh, blog at uh, John Eight uh, net. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.